y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the Spirit and in truth. I love the old church That old brother, song. pick up that old hymn book and you knew exactly what he was going to say. Sisters got happy, folks start patting the feet, clapping their hands and all of a sudden, he break off in a song, something like this. I want to uh, talk to you, uh, some of you may be, and I think most of you are not, I think I can say without fear of successful uh, contradiction, uh, from the subject matter found in Acts chapter 28, verses 3 to 5, just shake, just shake the snakes off. Mm -hmm. Just shake the snakes off. Now, if you are a snake lover, you might be offended by the title. Uh, but when we look at uh, the, the context of this text and we look at uh, the circumstances, uh, Paul reveals something to us that we can learn about. Uh, and right now, some of y'all need to shake something off because uh, you act like that you're here as some type of celebrity and that somehow we ought to be happy that you graced us with your appearance Amen. and that you didn't really come here to praise God in spirit and in truth. I'm looking for just two or three people that can get off Facebook just for a moment. Uh, they can just stop what you're doing and talking and stop being cool just for a moment and just shout, thank you, Jesus, like God means something to you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. I'll, I'll make sure I'm in the right place. I'm about to get nervous. Didn't nobody say nothing. I'm about to run up out of here. Uh, I don't know about you, but there's something about a snake uh, that makes us nervous, uh, that, that does something to us. Uh, we have all of the information that has been given us about snakes that they're supposed to be more fearful of us than we are of them. Uh, but I'm not trying to test that hypothesis. <laughs> if a snake crawled in here right now, I would leave you to the Lord who is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among many. Well, I get to my car and accelerate at least up to 65 miles per hour to the nearest highway. And I would call for help in case some of you like fooling with snakes, uh, but I just have never uh, uh, appreciated a snake on any level. Mm -hmm. Some say you ought to like the snake because the snake eat rats. I say clean your house and don't have rats in the first place, <laughs> and you won't need snakes. Amen. Uh, I, I see no good in a snake. Amen. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we look at the creation, all of this good stuff was going on. The Bible says, God said, let there be light. God saw there was light and he said it was good. good. God said, let there be famine in the sea, in the midst of the sea, and in the midst of the air. And God saw these things he said it was good. good. God said, let there be fowls, let there be animals, and the kingdom begin to, to reveal itself, to fight them, and all these animals begin to come up. And he saw these things and said, it's good. God said he made man in his own image and said that everything God made was good. Then all of a sudden, the snake popped up. The <laughs> snake popped up. And from the time that snake popped up, things have not been so good. Amen. He might have been good at one time, but I submit to you without fear of successful contradiction that from Genesis chapter 3, the snake was not good. And even when we look at medicine, it's interesting that medicine sign for healing is two snakes twisted around each other and wonder why black folk won't go to doctors. <laughs> and you're going to put two snakes up for your symptom and then want us to come and get some help. That's why we don't go because we have a snake problem. You want us to come, put some chicken and some ham up there and we all be down there at least once a week. Amen. Uh, but it's interesting that the man of God, when we look at this great text, does not have to fear snakes. Look at this if you will and the book of Acts chapter 28, verses 3 through 5, when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw that the venomous beast hanged on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, thou, whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. I want to talk to you this morning about how to shake, shake all the snakes in your life. Amen. I submit to you that there are at least two snakes in the text. 
One is on his belly, near the wood, waiting for somebody to come near. The others are called barbarians who look at what you go through. <coughs> and upon close examination of how God has blessed you in your life, have declared that with all the stuff that you've been through, there's something wrong with you. Uh, the fact of the matter is, when we understand this great text, in Acts chapter 27, we'll find that Paul had been told by an angel of God that a storm was going to come in his life, and that the storm was going to tear up everything around him. But he received a word from God that said, except you abide Acts 27, 35, except you stay in the ship, you should likewise perish. <coughs> With all of our new converts this morning, I want to suggest to you that, oh yes, storms are coming. We can't stop the storms of life from coming. But you got to learn to stay in the ship. Man. you got to learn to stay in the good ship of Zion that you might be preserved when the snakes start to come after the storm. You'll see that it is Paul who is gathering uh, sticks. He had told them in Acts 27 that we were going to be shipwrecked and that we're going to be saved on boards and pieces. He had told them that a vehement storm would come and if we just stay with the Lord, everything is going to be all right. He had told them, he had guaranteed that their lives would be saved by an almost Savior, by the word of God from heaven itself. And yet, while he is picking up wood after surviving a frightful storm, a viper, not just any snake, but a viper, one of the ten most poisonous snakes on the face of the earth, bit hold of him and latched home to him. What I found interesting is where the snake bit Paul. The snake didn't bite him on the leg. The snake didn't bite him on the knee. But the snake bit him in his hand. When we look at the hand, we learn that there are a lot of symbolic things about the hand. First of all, the hand is an interesting place, full of some gospel, gospel meaning. The hand, uh, while we have two of them, have two unique set of prints on them. The hand, which is represented by the five fingers, uh, represent the number of grapes. The hand that God has provided us with, the hands he provides us with, represents strength in grace. For four fingers by themselves must have the thumbs in order to create the strength that need to latch and to hold on to things. The hand is represented in holistic by both of them to be ten in numeral uh, in numerization, which represents the ten commandments that God gave in Decalogue to Moses. There are 15 joints in each hand, the number for a covering. And lastly, the hand, when we look at it, when it grasps together, uh, we sing an old song. It has the whole world in his hand represents a covering that not God literally have hands, but that God has covered his people in the hollow of his hand. Amen. I don't know about you, but there's no sweeter song to sing than he has the whole world in his hand. So it's not uh, surprising that in life as you go about your business that when the snake wants to bite you, he wants to bite you where you're covered at. He wants to bite you where your work is done at. He wants to bite you in your hands because it's the hands that give praise to God. Am I right about it? There's something about the viper. When he's come, he comes near you. He comes near you not because he likes you, but he's attracted to you. There's something about this text that showed that the snake was not in the cold, for he is a cold-blooded animal, but he got by something hot. I want you to know there are some two-legged snakes that have gotten by you because you are hot. Amen. And when a snake sees some heat, he's attracted to heat. Am I right about it? He wants to warm up by you. That snake is not by you because <coughs> he wants to eat you. He's by you because he wants to warm up by you. You got some snakes that right, that's by you right now that don't like you for no other reason. They can see the anointing of God in your life and you cannot. So whenever you see a snake, you ought to say thank you, Jesus, because that means that you are hot and God's about to do something in your life. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. We run from snakes <clears throat> because we run from our own identity. There's something about this text that, that really jumped out of me. We pull some things out of this text, uh, just illuminating, but, but we find that, that maybe it was something about Paul that was different than the barbarians and the other survivors. Why did he bite somebody else? <clears throat> I'm sure he was not the only person 
gathering sticks, but the snake bit Paul. Well, maybe it was the word that he preached. Remember, snakes like heat. Am I right about it? Mm -hmm. Maybe it was that hot gospel that he had preached. Uh, you remember in Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse number 9, the Bible said that Jeremiah said, but the word of God was in my heart, shut up in my bones, and it was like fire, and I was weary and well-bearing well -bearing, and could not say. Maybe it was the eyes of Paul <clears throat> that when he looked amongst all the other barbarians, that he saw something in his eyes that nobody else could see. Maybe the snake saw what was seen by the Assyrians in 2 Kings 6 and verse number 7. When the Bible says that uh, Elijah prayed, open his eyes that he might see. For there be more of us than there be with him. There's nothing like uh, letting a snake see something in you that other people can't see. The snake see the God in you while people see nothing in you. It's almost like preaching to a herd of barbarians. The snake knows that in order to, just, to, to upset or bother the preacher, you just got to sit down and don't say that look crazy like you're having a sugar attack and look around each other. But the barbarians look and they see a man preaching and say there must be something wrong with him because he's shipwrecked just like us. There's something about a snake that's more intelligent than a Christian. The snake knows <coughs> that in order to get optimum heat, he's got to get with the most hottest source that's in the area. Uh, Out of all the barbarians that are around, the snake chose Paul. Chose him perhaps because of the word. Chose him perhaps because of the vision that he had. But most of all, he chose to bite him on his head because he knows a holy head when he sees a holy head. Yeah, you know to say yeah. amen? <clears throat> but Brother Hampton, snakes don't bother me. Well, snakes don't bite stuff that's cold. Mm -hmm. Amen. Snakes don't like stuff that's cold. Thank you, Jesus. Snakes don't bite stuff that don't praise God. Folk that sit up in church that won't praise God, Amen. nothing ever happened to them. Uh -huh. If you sit here right now, you've been through some stuff, you've been through some stuff, you can rest assured it was a snake somewhere around because you were not going through stuff because you were a bad person. You were going through stuff because God was here to move you to another level. Uh -huh. And when a snake saw you was hot, he got close to you. Yeah. A snake likes to get close to hot people. How many of you got some snakes in your life? Raise your hand. Some of y'all lying because I ain't never seen nothing hot come from you. Say so, amen. You, you come in here cold, won't give God praise, won't say amen. If I was a dude, I wouldn't date you either. You look boring. Sitting there looking all crazy, looking like, looking like, looking like, uh, I don't, amen. I'm going to get back to my turn. Uh -huh. but, but now, the snake uh, attacks Paul because he knows that all the folk around, you got to get the men that's closest to God. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you said, preacher? Well, let me, let me tell you what I'm saying. There's something that attracts toxic people to holy people. Toxic people can see God in you and you can't see God in yourself. Amen. Am I right about it? Acts chapter 16, Paul and Peter, Paul and Silas was in jail. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. They were in jail. And most folk, most barbarians would have looked at Paul and Silas and said, them old crooks are in jail. But some snakes were standing and saw them in jail singing praises to God. And despite their circumstances, they were still giving them glory. And they decided to come over because they made the jailhouse rock them right about it. And an angel shook the gates open. But guess what? When they jumped up, the snake said, whoa, wait a minute, I'm going to kill myself. Because, see, when you don't serve God when things happen, you don't know how to react to things. But when you serve God, when things start shaking and when storms come and things start happening, you learn to get close to God uh -huh. and farther from the devil. Am I right about Amen. it? Amen. There the Bible says that it was him standing up and saying, do thyself no harm. He said, for we are all here. And do you not realize that they had a revival that night? And Paul went on to baptize the jailer and his family. Am I right about it? You see, the problem there is, is that people love to be close to somebody who's getting close to God. But I want to stop here for station identification. Because when folk get close to God, I'm talking about new converts now, and folk that are seeking God, when you get close to God, the snake will get close to you. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. When you get close to God, you remember the parable uh, in Matthew chapter 13, you remember the parable of the soul and the seed. You remember that, that Jesus said, let me explain you this parable. He said that, that, that the seed is the word of God which fell on the heart of man. And when it was received into an open heart, he said the devil came quickly at night and wanted to take the seed from the people of God. I want you to understand that the day that you got baptized, snakes started moving in to surface around you because there's 
something hot in you that they can see you might not be able to see in yourself. And as you're gathering wood, which represents fuel, as you're getting stronger, which represents his word, as you're getting better and learning and doing better, the snake will get closer and closer, and sooner or later, the snake will bite you. Uh -huh. But you got to remember one thing, shake that snake out, am I right about it? That poison cannot hurt you. If you stand on God's word, everything will be all right, am I right Man. about it? Man. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, I believe it is, now the spirit of 2 Timothy chapter 4, now the spirit speaking, especially in the latter times, that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Am I right about it? For many mm -hmm. men to eat them and to stain uh, from meats which God has committed uh, uh, unto us for eating uh, with thanksgiving. I want you to know the day that you got baptized, the day you got close to God, the uh -huh. day that you heard the word and said, thank you, Jesus. The devil summons every snake he had to get around you uh -huh. immediately. But, but, but Brother Hamilton, you I don't see all that in me. Right now, there's a preacher sitting in this audience, and he just don't know it. Right now, there's a deacon sitting in this audience, and he just doesn't see it. Right now, there's a minister's wife, or a preacher's wife, or a deacon's wife, or elder's wife, and they just don't see it. The only way you're going to know is you're getting ready to go to the next level is to start looking for snakes. And you see a couple of snakes, you ought to smile because you're on the right path. Am I right about it? Yeah, somebody ought to say it, man. The only way you know things are going good is see if, they, if, if the snake ain't bothering you. Uh, let me, all right, let me, let's look again at point number two. Uh, uh, the Bible says that, listen to this, I will therefore, in 1 Timothy 2, verse 8, now what did the snake bite Paul? Yeah. He bought him in the, bit him in the hand. Well, you can go to without, I hear people say this all the time, well, I was out in the world, you know, every day was good and nothing happened to me. Uh, uh, you know, but, but what were your hands doing in the, in, the, in the world? What were your hands doing in the world? Well, we were rolling up blunts. Drinking whiskey. We was rolling dice and craps. The snakes, they don't have a reason to bite you. <laughs> you doing what I want you to do. Am I right about it? Have our witness up in here. No, you, what, what Joseph, I can roll a blunt with one hand. All right, that's quite a tap. Uh huh, but didn't nothing happen to me. Well, the snake don't want nothing to happen to you. The snake just look at you and say, just keep doing what you're doing. Am I right about it? And it just seemed like as soon as I start getting wood, which represents fuel, as soon as I start getting wood, start getting stuff to survive with, start getting close to the word of God, the Bible says in Proverbs that where there is no wood, the fire go out. As soon as I got close to God and got close to the cross and got some wood in my life, the snake bit me. You mean he didn't bite you when you was rolling dice? No, he didn't bite you rolling dice. He wants you to come up snake high. Am I right about it? He had no problem. He wants you to come snake out. You mean he didn't bite me when I was out there hustling on the street? No, he didn't want you to hustle on the street. You were working for him. But as soon as you picked up the word of God, here come that old nasty snake. And I started to figure out what is it about him biting his on his hand. I remember Paul preached in 1 Timothy 1, chapter 2, chapter 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 8. I would therefore that every man, everywhere, Pray, lifting up holy hands. Uh, Am I right about it? Uh, when you lift your hands to Jesus, every snake in the world gonna try to bite you. Y'all ought to say amen. Uh, when you lift your hands to Jesus, it offends the snake. He gets upset. He wanna bite you with your head. I dare you lift your hands to the Lord. But let me tell you something. Dear Lord, I lift my hands under thee. No other place I'd rather be than with my Lord and servant thee. When you lift your hands to the Lord and stretch your hands out to the Lord, you offend every snake possible within a 20 mile radius. Matter of fact, I watched a movie and I watched a movie called Snakes on the Play. I never understood that movie. The illustrations were raggedy. Looked like it was good actors in it. But looked like they shot it on a low budget. Snakes didn't even look real. But there were snakes, no doubt, on the plane. And so being the curious mind that I am, I said, well, who put them snakes on the plane? But that, that many snakes on the plane there ought to be a snake charmer on the plane. Am I right about it? If there's a snake charmer on the plane, he ought to be able to control the snakes. Well, somebody said, what that got to do with the text? Well, I want you to understand something. God put that snake in the garden. Am I right about it? And God said that the heel of our feet would bruise his hand. If there, if there are snakes in the church, the last person 
not to be afraid of a snake is a man of God. Amen. 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 Every snake in your life ought to realize that you will stomp their head if they get out of life. Y'all ought to shout amen. Because God given us power over the snakes in life. Well, I work with a couple of snakes. Well, me too. <laughs> amen. Can't trust them. I was making up noise and rattling and going on for no reason. I always do stuff that I ought not do, but let me tell you the one thing I need not to do is worry about the snake. Am I right about it? Because even if he bites me, there is God's preservation because he has a reservation for me. The reason he wants to bite me is because of the anointing that's in my life. And when I see a snake, a human two-legged snake, now I won't say the thing, same thing about a belly crawling snake, but a human snake, I'm not scared of a human snake. Amen, because God is on my side. Am I right about it? Y- y'all ought to say amen. Y'all, 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 y'all scared of both of them. You have to worry. The only snake you have to worry about is a snake in the pulpit, the snake at your Bible study, and a snake that won't praise God. Amen. Let me tell you something. You know how a church sounds full of snakes? Very quiet. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Very quiet. Because a snake will never praise God. You can't make a snake say amen. As a matter of fact, he'll bite you if you praise God. Uh-huh. Amen. Don't you know there are scriptures in the Bible for you to be raising your hand in the sanctuary of the Lord? Am I right about it? Let me, let me, let me, let me share this with you very quickly. For all you snakes, but the difference in a snake and a Christian, the Bible says in Psalm 134 and verse number, number 2, he said, lift your hands in the sanctuary of the law uh-huh. and give him praise. Amen. I said one, two, and said five snakes over here. Amen. Six, seven snakes, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, we got some snakes. We, 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 got, we got one Christian here. The Bible said lift your hands in the sanctuary of the law. And the snake don't have no head. He won't lift his head. Am I right about it? The snake won't lift his head. And it ought to feel good to lift your hands and give him praise. Amen. Amen. All right. And we had to walk out of the snakes that left over there. Okay, that was a Christian. And a house full of snakes over here. Praise God. So I want to lift your hands in the sanctuary of the Lord and give him praise. Amen. Give him praise. And all present don't want to praise the Lord. Got to be a snake. When folk look at you and you shout amen, you say, look at you snake. I'm going to give him glory anyway. If you're not proper Traditionally hindered, you ought to be able to lift your hands and give God praise because God said, Lift your hands in the sanctuary of the house of God. Am I right? And give him praise. Psalm 134. But a snake don't want to praise God. He want to bite God. He want to kill God. And everything good that God has done in your life, uh-huh. you got to understand that you're going through what you're going through. And when we look at this text, I come to an end. We'll find that because the snake bit him on the hand, that folk thought that he was supposed to, supposed to have been dead. I told you before that this was one of the most poisonous snakes because it appears that it was a sea snake that bit him. And when a sea snake bites you, you only got about 20 to 30 seconds to live, Mm. meaning that even if help was there, they would have to see the bite, get the venom, quickly get over you and shoot it to you to give you a chance to live. 20 seconds is not long. So if I'm with Gerald and Gerald gets bit, if I don't have the venom on me, I got 20 seconds to help him. So the barbarians was watching and they were counting down. There's some folk that should have been in some storms in your life. And them barbarous folk that don't know God, nor the power of God, are looking at you. And they're staring. And they say, well, he's been bit because he lost his business. He's been bit because he lost his family. She's been bit because he left her or she left her. She's been bit because her health is bad. He's been bit because he's been in prison. He's been bit by drugs. He ought to be dead by now. And they're waiting for him to fall. He's been thrown and he ought to be dead right now. And the barbarians that don't know God are waiting on you to fall. And what I'm preaching to you this morning is to the fallen. Won't you shake the snake off and let him see the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Shake off your past mistakes. Shake off what folk think. Shake off every lie. Shake off every bondage. Shake off every addiction. Shake it off in the name of Jesus and give him praise and glory and lift the very hand that he bit you on and shout, thank you Jesus this morning. Amen. 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 Well, preacher, how you close this lesson out? Well, it's really simple. And to those non-snake people, that one snake sleeping on the front row, knocked out sleeping good as he wants, that's all right. Well, but we'll preach the hell out of wake him up and let everybody else go home. We're going to keep on for the long version. Amen. <laughs> All right, now, how, what, what did you do? Well, here's, here's what you need to do. Y'all listening? Here's what you do. Paul looks and he knows that trouble is coming. Just like trouble is coming in your life and in my life. <laughs> trouble winds are coming, church. 
The church now is being seen as just another place. Man and his tradition has infiltrated the church. And two-legged snakes are preaching things for filthy lucre. We now have snakes standing saying, just come on in. It don't matter what life you live. We'll even take homosexualities. That's snake doctrine. We'll even take homosexuality in the house of God now. It doesn't matter what God's words say. God not judging that God said you're an abomination. Amen. And I believe you're still Amen. an abomination. Amen. And even in the house of God, the preachers of God are no longer preaching against sin and degradation. Men are walking around now preaching whatever they do to get a crowd. They're looking around for people to entertain and they're preaching about anything that's soft and tender. Instead of calling a lie a lie, like Jesus said in the book of Revelation 22 and verse number 17, I believe he said, uh, uh, let him that steal, steal. Let him that, that do this, do this. And let him see. He said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me still. I believe that Jesus still is against sin. I believe Jesus still wants us to live a holy life. First Peter says, chapter 2 and verse number 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a raw priesthood. I don't believe that a baby's daddy is equal to a married man raising his baby with his family. I believe that a baby's mama is a whore and a baby's daddy is a whoremonger. And that's in God's word. And I'll stand flat footed and preach it until God call me off of it. We need to preach the unadulterated truth about God and call man from darkness into the eternal marvelous light. Yeah. While you preach it, you need to understand something. When you preach this kind of gospel and tell folks there is but one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, the snake going to bite you every now and again. And when it bites you, you need to shake him off as fast as you can. Every now and again when you're going on about your business and Doing good. Somebody gonna bring up the fact that you did something wrong in your past and start messing with you. That snake gonna bite you when God start blessing you with a new house or a new car. Or if he just bless you with more life and, and freedom, the snake don't like it. And when you start saying, Lord, thank you, he gonna bite you. But you need to learn to shake the snake off him. I write about it. He has no power on him. I write about it every night. <coughs> Every now and again, uh, when your friends see you don't do what you used to do and act like you used to act and go where you used to go, they're going to get upset with you and go tell your secret to somebody that only you and them know so they can try to hurt you. Don't get mad. Don't fight her. God's already got you protected. Uh, it's been washed uh, in the watery grave of baptism. Uh, just shake Shake him off. I'm trying to let y'all go home. I got to do one more now. On your job, you have some two-legged snakes. All kind of snakes on your job. Walking around male and female snakes. Uh, lying on you, trying to get your position. Upset because God didn't bless you. Made you a manager. Upset because there's peace in your house. Upset because you got a raise. Uh, upset because your future is brighter than theirs. Uh, but I want you to learn to shake him off on your job. Well, preacher, what are you saying? Psalms of Clarence, Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills which covers my help. My help coming from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. I like what he says. Uh